Robert Mueller. Joining me now, a member of the Senate Judiciary Committee, Chris Coons, the Democratic Senator from Delaware. He's also on Foreign Relations Committee and Vice Chair of the Ethics Committee. Senator, 37 people or entities charged, seven guilty pleas, one conviction at trial, five sentenced. Was the impact of Mueller's work lessened by the incremental release? Would we, on any other day, had it all dropped at once, be floored by the outcome? That's right, Michael. If this had been released as one great final uh, report and um, spray of indictments uh, and then proceedings um, in in terms of both uh, guilty pleas and convictions, uh, it would have a stunning impact. The fact that it has happened uh, over nearly two years, I think, has lessened the impact as most Americans have absorbed um, what is a really stunning story. Um, First, that there was an intentional effort by a hostile power to interfere in our presidential election. Uh, But second, that there were a dozen senior people in the Trump campaign seeking uh, help from Russia, trying to connect and coordinate with them um, and trying to have some influence that um, runs well outside what we would expect uh, from patriotic folks uh, pursuing election or supporting a candidate. Um, Whether or not Bob Mueller has ultimately made some case Uh, for conspiracy, we don't yet know. As you pointed out correctly, it rests with the attorney general. Um, But the leak by a senior Justice Department official that there will be no more indictments coming strongly suggests that, um, at least for the narrow charge that Robert Mueller had, um, there may be no more evidence forthcoming. Um, I'll join you, if I can, briefly, Michael, and just thanking Robert Mueller for his remarkable service and the professional way in which he's conducted himself. The fact that there will be no further indictments, does it necessarily mean that there was not a cognizable claim against the president? Or is that a reflection of that Justice Department policy that says you can't indict a sitting president? And I guess what I mean, Senator Coons, is this. Might there nevertheless be evidence in that report that rises to the high crimes and misdemeanor standard for impeachment? That's possible, and that's why the report needs to be released um, as fully as possible, as soon as possible to Congress, um, because it's our job to conduct oversight. It's entirely possible that there was evidence of uh, misdeeds, of inappropriate, even unpatriotic behavior that did not rise to the level of a chargeable offense, either because the president under DOJ policy cannot himself be indicted um, while serving in office, um, or because these were you know, untoward, inappropriate things um, that deserve oversight and sunshine, but that did not rise to the level of a crime. I'll just remind you, Robert Mueller's charge was quite narrow, and where he found things that seemed to be uh, indicators of crime, he fairly quickly shed them to other jurisdictions, to the Southern District of New York, to the State of New York, to uh, the Eastern District of Virginia. Um, So this does not mean the end of investigations into the Trump campaign, Trump organization, Trump foundation and so forth. Um, But it may well be um, the end of any prosecution that might come out of Robert Mueller's narrow investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 and the possibility of conspiracy with the Trump campaign. Is your demand and the demand of other Democrats to see it all born of a distrust of this process? Uh, It's born out of a a concern for transparency. Um, The good news here, I think, Michael, is that we're all aligned on this, meaning President Trump is publicly saying the report should be fully released. Uh, Rudy Giuliani uh, said within the last day that uh, the White House should not get an advance uh, peak look at it. It should be released uh, to the Congress and the White House at the same time. Uh, Lindsey Graham, chairman of judiciary, is saying that it should be released as fully and as quickly as possible Um, The few legitimate reasons why there might be a narrowing of all the investigatory materials uh, and the report delivered to the attorney general and what comes to Congress uh, would be threefold. First, interference with ongoing investigations. We know there are several. Um, Second, classified information, which, of course, Congress is um, qualified to handle um, in our intelligence committees. Um, And third, um, um, excuse me, um, uh, Grand jury information, forget me. Um, there's a long-standing rule that without a judicial order, uh, grand jury information is not shared. So um, that's the three areas where I think um, Attorney General Barr and his team may well be reviewing the report uh, and its work product to see what is appropriate. Um, but frankly, I'm expecting this weekend, given the Attorney General's letter, um, that Congress will get notified of the principal conclusions of the report 
Um, and then I hope as soon as next week that we'll be seeing um, the vast majority of the report with only minor redactions. We showed on a split screen, Senator Coons, while you were speaking, the president on the move right now in West Palm Beach. He's, he's been unusually restrained and quiet. I want to ask you a political question about all of this. Do you have any concern that your party will overplay its hand? Look, the reality seems to be no collusion, no obstruction of justice. If this now tees up a series of never-ending investigations by Democrats in the House or the Senate, will you not play into his hands as it was a witch hunt? Well, we have to be careful um, to use the resources and the abilities of the House majority uh, in a, in a re- focused and a responsible way. Um, I think there were 13 investigations by the House Republicans of the Benghazi incident. Um, I myself sat through, uh, I think, three different hearings in the Senate. Um, and the Republicans in that instance demonstrated uh, overreach. Um, I'll remind you that the phrase move on, the organization move on, um, was coined uh, late in the impeachment process against Bill Clinton uh, because the average American had gotten tired of uh, special, uh, excuse me, independent counsel Kenneth Starr's investigations that went on for years and then the impeachment process. So I'll agree with you, Michael. We need to focus on things that are relevant and matter to the average American. Uh, I support Speaker Pelosi's view that um, we ought to be able to explain uh, what we're investigating and why. Um, there's lots to go after. There are lots of issues um, that we've known over the last two years, whether it's Trump's taxes and the uh, allegations of some impropriety there, um, or it's ways in which uh, his decision making and policy is um, unpredictable or even inappropriate. Uh, just yesterday, there was a, an incident where uh, the Trump administration rolled out significant new sanctions against North Korea, and then abruptly in a tweet, President Trump reversed them, um, even as his own cabinet leadership, Secretary of the Treasury, National Security Advisor, were trumpeting these important new sanctions. The president, apparently without consultation within his own administration, uh, abruptly reversed them out of his affection for Kim Jong-un. I'll remind you, Secretary of Defense Jim Mattis resigned in protest over Trump's abrupt change of our uh, direction and policy in Syria before ISIS was uh, the ISIS caliphate was defeated. There's plenty of things for us to be debating in terms of policy, uh, and there are a few things that deserve focused and ongoing investigation. We should not overdo it. We have to remember that there's a 2020 election coming up, Michael, and the question the average American is going to ask uh, is not about any of these investigations. They're going to ask, um, what would you do, Democratic Party, that would make a difference in my life, uh, that would help my family, my kids, uh, my immediate community um, deal with opioids, uh, deal with health care, um, get a better job? Those are the things that I hear in Delaware are on the minds of the average American. I'm not saying we should abandon our responsibility of oversight and investigations, but we need to be focused. Final question, you referenced ISIS. Are you willing to give the president credit for the defeat of ISIS, the caliphate in Syria? Absolutely. I'm willing to give credit to our armed forces uh, who have fought bravely alongside uh, our Syrian partners, uh, Kurds and Arabs in the Syria Democratic Forces. Um, this was begun by uh, Barack Obama, who pulled together an international coalition. It was continued by President Trump. Um, his gut instinct seems to be to pull us out of all foreign conflicts, uh, but his national security team prevailed upon him um, to stay engaged and to finish the fight. Uh, it's my hope that he really has changed what was that abrupt policy decision I referenced a moment ago, and that we will retain a thousand uh, American troops for the the near term um, to make sure that Iran does not take advantage of the vacuum created uh, by the defeat of ISIS on the ground. Uh, And given that our military leaders estimate there are tens of thousands of ISIS fighters remaining uh, embedded in the community. Uh, But of course, I'll give uh, credit to our commander in chief and troops um, for the success in the fight against ISIS. Okay, me too. Thank you, Senator Coons. I appreciate it. Thank you, Michael. Always good to be on with you.